Hello everyone, it's Doris Colgate on the dock doing the dockside chats with Steve Colgate who is behind the camera today because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Tonga in the South Pacific. Steve gave you a little bit of a story last time about meeting his cousin there, but I want to tell you what it was really like because this is one of the places where when people say to me, where did you enjoy cruising the most? It was Tonga. And the reason for that is how wonderful the sailing is there and how absolutely beautiful the people were when we were there. We did two cruises back to back, flotilla cruises with our graduates. I have some stuff here I'm going to show you. And uh, each one of them was about 10 days. And the first one started on January 12th in 1992. So we're talking about a long time ago. And honestly, we don't know what it's like there now. But when we went, it was quite primitive. When the kids wanted to eat something, they took a mango off a tree. And you could see that they ate a lot of mangoes because they had a lot of little sores around their mouths. When they were hungry, they went fishing. In season, when they had melons, they had cassavas. And so it was living off the land. And most of the islands had no electricity, so they might bring in a little generator and show a movie on a great big sheet sitting ashore. But everywhere we went, we were met with beautiful people. And the minute we would anchor, they would come right out to the boat with their wares, and they didn't ask for much. But one of the things they liked to do was to trade shells. Now, I live in Florida now, so shells are shells. But when we did this, we lived in Manhattan, in New York. And to get a shell like this was fantastic. I mean, I just loved it. So these are all the shells that I somehow brought back with the rest of this loot from Tonga. And they would trade them for um, a dollar here or there, or some of the canned goods we might have on, on the boats. They never asked for very much. But the main thing that they wanted to do was to sell us their wares. And these are, remember, this is 92, so they probably are faded a little bit. But these are placemats that they made. I still have them, I cherish them. Imagine bringing all this home on a plane now. You know, they don't let you bring anything on planes anymore. But we did, and baskets that look like this. And they're beautifully made. Since 92, I've used these and nothing's ever happened to them. Some of the placemats they had, they would put shells around them. Isn't that beautiful? The way they had the shells just knitted in. But one of the things that amazed us the most was what we call tapas cloth. There's another name for it. But it is great big scenery pieces made from the bark of a paper mulberry tree. They take the bark off, they pound it together, and they come up with these gigantic cloths. I'm going to show you a small piece here. And they numbered each panel. Now this doesn't have one of the more beautiful um, designs on it, but it is one of their flowers. And everything, every design on these cloths meant something. So this is from panel 10, and you can see how, how they're, they're, they're sort of uh, pressed together, and I don't honestly know how they do that. But I'm gonna show you, we ha happen to have one that's about 20 feet long and 12 feet high, framed in our home. And this is one of the panels that was cut off uh, from one of the ones that we saw. They made these huge things, and then when we came along, if we couldn't take the whole thing, they would just cut off a panel, which broke our hearts, but that is what it is. This is the bark of the paper mulberry tree, painted with root dyes from that tree and from some of the other plants. Now they use these on their floors. In the one place where we saw cars, which was in the capital, uh, Niafu, I believe it was called. They had them in the car, so we sat, when we took a taxi, we sat on this. They wrap them around themselves like it, like a pareo, which you would see in uh, Tahiti and in Hawaii. So and when they did their famous dances, which they did, where they would put coconut oil all over themselves, and then you would put dollar bills on them. But they also would wear, at the same time, a headdress. 
that look like this. Now they had them for men. This is a bigger one. Uh, Steve, come into the picture here. Okay, I want you to put that on. Bend down a little bit. There you go. So <laughs> there's Steve in the headdress for the ceremonial dances. Okay. Now there's one more thing. Oh, I want to show you. This is what it really looks like when they are making these tapas cloths and they make them for ceremonial reasons mostly. This was the one that they were making to give to a princess who was getting married very soon. And it is gigantic. Look how many people are working on it. And they were singing, they had umbrellas in some cases because it is quite um, warm in that part of the world. Uh, Tonga is made up of 13 principalities. There is, uh, it, it is a kingdom. I'm not gonna get into all that, but I wanna tell you about one little occasion where on the second part of the cruise, when we, the second group came in, we were in Hunga, which is where we met Steve's cousin. We went up a steep walkway to what turned out to be a plateau. And on this plateau was the most amazing sight. It was filled with beds from Sears Roebuck and dowry uh, uh, displays of China and all kinds of things that obviously was re represented. Each of the girls who were sitting on the edge of, the of each of these beds with their mothers proudly standing behind. There were bedspreads all over them. These were iron beds. It turns out they bring these out once a year when they want the girls to get married. And because it is an island of a of, uh, small area, they bring in the men from the other island so there wasn't too much intermarriage within the island itself. And the men were sitting drinking kava, which now is popular here in Florida, but it's horrible tasting stuff, which sort of soothes the mind. Um, and, and they were sitting in a, a big shed somewhere and the girls were sitting there quite sad because most of them were nurses. They'd been to the United States, they had learned a trade, and now they were gonna have to get married. But that's another part of the amazing world that we get to see under sail. I wanted to give you just a little bit of a flavor of that. I could tell you a lot more. We do have quite a show we can put on with slides. It wasn't movies in those days, but that's it for now. Just wanted to tell you about the kingdom of Tonga and sailing there.